Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run on the Titan of the Pit of Heresy dungeon. Now, what makes this run different is A, it is a flawless strategy because I changed my strategy at the boss. I went with something different, died pretty quickly, and then used the strategy I was going to use to start with and completed it first time. So this would have been a flawless run had I not changed a completely different strategy. Secondly, I'm not using any Hive mods. So if you've been unlucky enough that you've never dropped Hive Armaments, which really are the Hive mod that most people are going to really want for this, then this this will work for you. Now, if you're on a Warlock, which I'm not obviously, but if you are on a Warlock, I will do a, 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 a Hunter run. I haven't done one yet, but I will do one. But if you're on a Warlock, you can... You can marry the best parts of this run versus the Warlock run. So if you if if you're looking for a guide on how to actually do this, check out my Warlock run where I explain in depth how to do everything. This is not a guide on how to complete this just standard. This is this is how to do it without mods. So I'm not going to be explaining all the encounters because I've done it twice. So if you really want the encounters explained, go and check out one of my other one of the other runs because they they are more concise about how we do this. So it's just a, we're just going to be highlighting the differences in the runs and how you do it without without the mods. Now this area, as most people know, you go to A, which we are now, to unlock the Sword Knights. Now once you kill this Sword Knight, that will unlock random Sword Knights in the area. They'll patrol the different walkways. In front of each of these towers, inside, underneath them, will be a Pit Keeper. You have to kill the Pit Keeper to open the door. And you will have, as you've seen me killing, you'll have those ogres patrolling certain walkways. What I like to do is, before I actually engage a set of enemies, I like to make sure there are no uh, ogres waiting to surprise me. Because the, the damage is pretty... Yeah, there's not, there's not much escape in it. So, once you take out the pit keeper and a couple of little ads that are with the pit keeper, you will get more ads spawning in. It's worthwhile killing them all. That's this area, basically. The the wizard, you've got three bosses you have to kill. The wizard is a right... You, you, once you, you have to kill all the bosses with swords. So, and it's obviously it's the same sword, but now that we've killed that guy, we've unlocked sword knights in the open world. There are three sigils at the back. That's the locations of the three bosses. The knight can only be taken out with right shoulder attack. So the way I kind of do it is right shoulder, right shoulder block because he will attack you back. Keep doing that till you get your super, then hit him with your super and then continue right shoulder, right shoulder back uh, block. Block is left trigger. The wizard can only be attacked with right the right trigger attack, which is very similar to the black talons attack where you throw that kind of tracking energy thing at them. And the Shrieker is attacked with blocking the Shrieker shots and sending it straight back to the Shrieker. So the only other kind of only kind of advice I can give you at this part is what I try and do as much as possible is avoid when I'm traversing this area, I'm going from area to area, uh, from from sigil to sigil, tower to tower. I try and avoid the walkways as much as possible. That way you don't run into too many trash mobs. And the trash mobs can do more damage. When I say, oh, they're not really trash mobs, they're more flash mobs. Random sets of boomers, snipers, they can spawn on the walkways and they do a lot of damage. You can move out of the area and let them despawn, which they will. You don't have to fight them, you just get out of there. But if you avoid the walkways as much as possible, until of course you need another sword, then you should avoid them. You should be able to avoid coming up against too many of them. So that's this area. Just, you know, take your time, know what's in front of you. I said this, I, I posted a, a my, my first ever video. I posted my first ever video on, on the Pit Heresy on Reddit. And one of the comments I got, now if you're one of these people that does this, and I appreciate you watching this video, but listen, it's the stupidest thing. When people post comments and they do uh, upper lower case in a row, and I didn't really, I, I knew it wasn't nice. I knew it wasn't complimentary. But then when I found out what it was, I was like, and I, and I actually spent time trying to find out what that is. I'm, I feel embarrassed now that I even know that it's like saying the person's words back to them, but in a stupid voice, mocking them. And it's because I said, just take your time. Listen, if 
everybody took their time and strategized and had a plan when they come in to do stuff, 50% of videos on YouTube would never need watched. So it really is something that, you know, all content creators should be saying to their, their player base or people that follow them, anybody that watches their videos is, listen, just take your time. State of mind is as much as much a part of beating content as skill or strategy because you need to you need to be calm in order to carry out said strategy. So I thought I'd share that with you guys, you know. Mocking people or, you know, anybody that provides or is trying to provide a service, people that mock them irritate me beyond belief, you know, because you see that 90% of the comments you get are people saying, thanks a lot for this, or your guide helped, or yada yada, and then you get one guy who just like, I know it's a small percentage of the player base, but if you are that percentage, just imagine that person that put that piece of content out, took hours to get that out for you guys. You know, and this is YouTube. For anybody that's like, oh, you know, they're doing it for the money. You don't earn a lot of money on YouTube. You really don't. You need to make, you, you, you need like game-breaking videos to make money. I make next to nothing. In fact, it's nothing. I make nothing from making these videos. It's not why I do it. I do it to help people get through content. I, you know, I've actually, I've paid out probably six times the amount of money on upgrading my, my gear or replacing broken gear. So to get some person, I was going to say some child, because who would do that? That's a childish thing to do. Uh, I, I paid out, I pay out about six times the amount of money to, to be able to bring this content to you as I'm, I've ever made from content. And I would continue to do it to help people, help anybody I can. Anybody that knows me, clan members, friends, most of them only get through their stuff because I help them do it. And I don't ask for any thanks and I don't ask for any praise. It's just who I am. So next time, if you're thinking about putting that con comment out, uh, just have a little think. Have a little think about it first. You know, because, you know, unless of course you're Rick Kakis and people are saying your videos are too long, I agree. But we shouldn't really be attacking him because he can't shorten his videos down. We should be commending him that after all the kind of... He gets a lot... He gets a lot thrown at him. That he never gives up. And some people have probably only beat the rape because of his videos. So, you know. With Christmas just being around the corner. <laughs> it's my goodwill speech. You know. I suppose if we were kind to each other, there would be less problems in the world. That's pretty straightforward though. Right, I'm going to leave it at that before this becomes a, becomes a self-help video. <laughs> uh, I will catch you guys at the tunnels.
So here we are guys, we're at the Tunnels of Despair. These are the three tunnels, each section has a door at the end that can only be unlocked by putting an orb in it, which you get from a Yellow Bar Knight, which there are four of them located in these tunnels. If you follow my route, it will take you straight, it's, it's probably the most, it's the most efficient route I've ever, I've ever found to do it all. So just... Because we're doing it on the Titan, which is obviously different, and we are, we don't have any Hive mods. We have to do this slightly differently. So, as you can see, I am using a bow. The bows are very, very strong in this raid, I, I think. So, just follow my route. We start on the right-hand side, but we slam in the middle tunnel first. Then we come back to the right-hand side. And then we make it through to the left. We Left will be the last one we do. And that's this section over. The only kind of things I can say about this section, just to, you know, tips, is when you slam the second orb, be careful. When you turn around to run back where you came from, an ogre probably will appear. So there's a little bit on the right, on, on the left as we're going up here. If we were in the middle, there's a little bit on the left. It's a little kind of post. You can hide behind it uh, and, and just wait for the ogre to go. That's that's basically the, the strategy for this. Make sure that you try and take as many of these orange bars before you, you actually attack the boss because, as you can see, the solar attacks do a fair bit of damage. And remember, because you're on the Titan, as you've just seen in the video there, because you're on the Titan and we're using Bubble, you, you have a defensive strike which will give you an overshield and keep you alive. And that and and th th there's a great thing to to come up in the video right there. Just because you don't have high armaments doesn't mean you're not gonna drop heavy. You will drop a fair amount of heavy doing this. So, you know, the the twenty one percent delirium is still a strong option. In fact, I probably wouldn't have brought anything else in here simply because until you really, really until you get to the boss, you're not really having to do fight up any kind of big ads. The 21% Delirium is its no good for fighting big ads, I don't think, or bosses. So here's the place I was talking about. When you slam, an ogre will probably appear. Just go over here and crouch behind this pillar here. And that's this section. Just make sure that when you're coming out of the openings, make sure that the ogre's not there. If he is there, wait for him to go. And follow my route and you'll get through this no problem. And I will see you guys in the chamber of suffering.
the chamber of suffering, which is the part we're at now, is probably the the most difficult part, or the or, or the part where things can go wrong the most. So have a very kind of direct approach to this. Clear out the ads first, obviously, and I'm gonna try and save my my bubble for every second orb, if at all possible. Now it's not that was the plan I came in with. Then I realised that I will actually get my supers back quite quickly. So I kind of didn't worry about using the bubble so much. So as you can see, if you crit with a bow, it's a one-hit kill. So we always I always take the, the knight on, on the left. Always take the knight on the left. Try and make sure you refresh the plate as much as possible. Have honed edge on, on the knight, as you can see, procced. And then we're going to go and get this. As you can see, we dropped heavy, so we can use heavy. And refresh the plate, then slam. If you feel the need to use your bubble, use it. So as you can see, I pop it on the first one. Now, the Boomer Knights now, with I think with any sniper, because we've got weapons of light, are now a one hit. So we get our defensive strike. I just kind of wait in here. Now, what I found as well is that some of the, some of the, because I've got the bubble up, some of the acolytes, some of the thrall won't push because they don't come near the bubble. If they do, they, you know they're you know you've took out some you've took out some of them. Just make sure you clear ads, and as you can see now, because because now. The, the 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 bubbles down. No, they're pushing. Now, I'm still using line rampants. It's because my line rampants, you know, because it keeps me a bottom hard at your hat. And just the, the the ones I've got increased my my stats to the where I wanted them. And my bow has got uh, explosive head and rampage. Now, the explosive head is great, you know. Rampage is really good for clearing out, you know, one after another. And you'll see here, there will be times where it looks like I'm taking quite a bit of damage. Just put that up and then get my defensive strike. Now, that, as you can see, that gives you room to play. Because with your stats, what you can do is you can increase your strength so you get your defensive strike back more. You could class ability. that you, and, and because the bow is doing the job... You know, we'll just make sure we've got the horned edge. Because the bow is doing the job of throw a grenade, which was a really bad grenade because I've got a fastball on. I'm so, I'm so bad at remembering what I've got on my character. <laughs> uh, yeah, because the bow is doing the job, you can save your, your heavy for when you really need it. You know, you can you can use the heavy to get yourself out of trouble. And as you can see... We're, we're we're pretty close we're not we're not like i'm gonna have it in two seconds but we're not too far away from getting my supper back you know and even when they push as long as you remember i was saying in the first part about state of mind state of mind is really important for doing this so i've been off the plate for a while so what i do is i go back refresh the plate you know and and this is what I do now when I don't have a bubble. Is we're, we're just we're not going to lo load a honed edge. We're just going to come over here, make sure there's no ads in front of us. But as you can see, I'm 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 trying to stay mobile, so that I'm at a harder target. And as long as you get that first crit, you'll be fine. You can body them. You don't. You, you know this isn't. You're not playing with your pals here or your mates. It's not about oh, two bodies. Oh, you're such a good player. As long as they, as long as they die, we're good. And then we'll just throw a grenade down, clear out as many of those throw. And now, just 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 for speed and efficiency, got got my my defensive strike. I can use my heavy just to do damage. You can see there, there's a brick of heavy on the floor over there. I can go and get it when I need it. And now we're getting a heap of the thrall pushing us, which is fine. And just keep going from side to side. No problem. And me again, I said it in previous videos, I'll say it again in this one. 
that front area because you're so exposed that's the area you need to keep your eye on so now we'll just move over to the right take it, those ads out get the honed edge as I try and get a clear clear a little bit of this side <laughs> that happens a lot that does happen a lot where you just see an ad flying <laughs> go get him <laughs> so now that we, we feel like we're kind of clear we'll take him down and just we, we've got a bubble so because I'm kind of low this is another thing we've got a bubble pop your bubble pick up the orb slam and now you've got your bubbles there we'll just reload normally take out the boomers as I say the one hit crits with weapons really easy and now we're safe in the bubble and we just rinse and repeat you should get your bubble back relatively quickly you know and and this is a time this is another thing that I should have said beforehand as well uh, the more ads you take out with a 21% delirium or because 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 of its fire rate it's, that's why I'm saying it it work obviously obviously with any weapon but because the fire rate on the 21%, the more enemies you can churn out quickly, more orbs you'll drop. Quicker you'll get your super back. If you can, if you master work your bow, if you do use the bow, if you master work the bow, then you'll get orbs for obviously multi kills. So we're just going to go out here. We're going to collect this heavy back onto the plate. So it's, it, it, the great thing about high armaments. Is they put the, the the heavy straight back into your your straight back into your uh, magazine, but just because you don't have high armaments, as I've already said in this video, doesn't mean you won't drop heavy. You can still use the twenty one percent. Just now, we have a weapon that will allow us to save some heavy ammo. And again, mobile, be mobile, don't. Uh, don't make yourself an easy target for those solar grenades. Those solar grenades are the ones that are going to mess you up. They will mess you up. So we're looking for him. Took him. Heavy out. Melt the last of the enemies over there. There's heavy here. Full complement again. And we've almost got our super back again. So refresh the plate and then slam. Make sure you've reloaded your sniper. Get your four shots now. You will see, I've just tossed a grenade down there, it's a bad grenade again, fastball. You don't, you don't have to take the knights out, you know? You can stay active and not take the knights out at all, you know, and just make, take them afterwards. But I would not, I would not suggest to ever do that because it's just more that you've got to deal with. Now we've got what bubble, should we need it? And we're back on track. Whenever you pop your bubble, make sure you pop it. At least some of it needs to be on the plate. And it just allows you to keep refreshing the plate with safety. Especially if there's loads of ads there. You know, make sure that you're, you're staying on top of the ads now. <clears throat> As you can see, that they'll spawn everywhere. <laughs> they'll come from the front. They'll come from the sides. If they, if they get too brazen, that's when they'll push like that. You don't really want that happening too often. So, get as you'll see, and you probably noticed as well that even without having a charged melee, whenever you get a melee, it seems to regenerate your health, which is really good. That is exactly what you want. Just make sure we've cleared that area. Now we've got the ads from the front right, and now we're good. Now it's just the ads on the left that we need to worry about. And now there they come again from the front. Bubble. And just clear out these ads. Just because you've got the bubble doesn't mean you can stand and fight fight ads relentlessly. So we're going to get the honed edge now that we've got the bubble up. And we'll have to do that again because we're getting hit too much. It's it's I, I, I've got a lot of... Uh, I've got a lot of minor spec on, uh, you know, protection from minor. I would probably, 
if if I was doing this again, I'll just take some of these ads out while I'm here. I would probably uh, change that and have some solar on to give me help against solar. But I figured that the minor spec would probably be the best thing. But the solar, you take so much solar damage here. So now we don't have a bubble. So we're just going to take these. So as you can see here, we only got one of them. And I've got to reload. So this is how I deal with it when I don't have a bubble. It's just about movement. It's just keeping moving. And this is where now I'm probably going to use more of the 21%. Because its ad clearing abilities are... We've got Honed Edge. Uh, uh, honed Edge. We don't have Honed Edge. We've got uh, Kill and Tally. That's when I would really go after a knight. If you're using the 21% to take out a knight that you've maybe missed with a sniper. As I said, again, previously in a video, that is the selling point of 21%, is kill and tally is so efficient. It really is. It turns a distinctly average a DPS, just, just for DPS, it turns a distinctly average S, uh, uh, heavy into a real, a real good heavy. Is that kill and tally? Yes, the overflow is is superb. I mean, you can't. There's no overlooking that. But just for DPS, that is its selling point. Getting kill and tally, you know, and the fact that it stays there until you holster the weapon. It's no wonder everybody was using it for, for uh, for doing this, because if you if you're going to be finishing, if you're going to be facing what seems like endless amounts of ads. Why wouldn't you want a weapon that, you know, you can put on a mod that will help it generate its own ammo, and it will keep it will keep Rampage, its own version of Rampage, you know, forever, as long as long as you don't holster it. So that's kind of the selling point. If you don't have this weapon at the moment, then I would seriously think about getting it. Put the time in, and just get it. Now we're just going to grab this, get back. We've got a, we've got a bubble. So again, we will go down here, pop the bubble so it's some of it's on the on the plate slam, and there we go. That is the chamber suffering completed. Keep moving. Make sure you you know you're you're clever with your bubbles, and don't miss your shots. <laughs> I know that's not great, but. You understand what I'm saying? If you're going to be doing something like this, you kind of do need to hit your shots. Before we move to the next section, as you see, I'm changing. I'm putting the Midnight Cool on simply because it's a lightweight primary. So I can put the Yolton on. And I will see you guys at the bottom of this drop. So here we are guys at the Harrows. Now, again, I think in my first ever guide for this, I put, how do you put, make a guide for something that you don't fully understand? And I do, I do know this. Basically, the so, so you see me with three sigils, they're all accessed 
from the exit. Now on the way to the exit, we actually we actually come up against one of them. So now for anybody that's just skipped this part because they wanted to see this part, I changed weapons. I'm using the Jotun. Now something I've learned about the Jotun that a lot of people might not know, especially a lot of the OG players, players that have been playing D2 for for quite some time. Now for Limonark and Jotun, it's a quest you get. So you, there's a quest, I think you've got to kill so many fallen or whatever and do 10 legendary frames to get the weapon. So that makes it a lot easier. I definitely not took me a long time to get the Jotun. So this is the, this, this is the location of one of those sigils. I can't remember which one this actually is. Turret. This is turret. But basically Vex Head and A are easily located from left and right from the start. Now I would suggest to anybody who's 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 interested, I might I might put my original uh the, the original map that I had, although it I gotta be honest, it didn't really help me personally, but I'll put the map in the in the in the the description or the comments. Now this is how you get to the exit. Now the all four of the sigils are really easily accessed from the exit. So as you can see, get here, you have read on your map. So the one we've got, uh, spe I don't really know. I don't really know what that is. I keep calling it spiky, and this is spiky. It, it looks more like a tent actually now to me. So because because I was on the flawless run at this point, I realised I was getting hit, and I just went back, got out of trouble. That's what it's all about. When you're on a flawless run, don't 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 stand there trading blows when you don't have to. And the Yotun makes very light work of the the wizards. And that's one down. And I think the other one is diagonally right from here. So make sure you're reloaded. So the other one is Spikey A. So what was the other, that, that one we just done was Spike. This is Spikey A. This is, this is access diagonally right. So in this route. In, in a previous video, the last video, the flawless video I done, there's a better kind of guide on where these all are. But I'll, I will link the map, and basically take your time. As you can see, I've I've got line rampants on. Take your time. I know if you've been watching this video the whole time, I'm not going to go back through that. But yes, take your time. Yes, it's not it's not a childish piece of <laughs> piece of uh, advice. Most people die from making decisions that they, they don't have any reason why they made. So temperament, being calm, being level-headed, executing the plan that you've set yourself, they're all really good ways to make sure that you get through these things. And there are two of these sections, this is one of them, where you're quite open when you attack. And that was very nice of the wizard to do that. There's always a rock you can get behind like this, where, where you can have a bit of cover. And that's it. It's really simple to do this section. So I will leave it here and I will see you guys at the boss.
So here we are guys, we are at the Cradle of Damnation, we're going to be facing Zulmak, the boss, and this is where my flawless run come to an end. But if I'd have done it like this, this is the, I'd, I'd come in, used a completely different strategy, and then it all went to pot. So if, if I'd have used this strategy, we'd have been fine. So basically, as you can see, we've, we've used... We've used uh, we've used the the sniper. We've used Izanagi to take out the knight and picked up the sword. And I'm just trying to take out a few ads with the sword. We nearly died here actually because the sword tracks, which is not very good. So I've used the sword. I've went round and I've got re decent recovery. So. I'm 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 okay as long as I stay moving. I'm, you know. And 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 now, what we're doing is we're just running around making sure there's no ads. And then now uh, what I what I done was because I was using that sword, the first sword I picked up, I just the first boss I'm gonna take out is the shrieker because the shrieker takes the least amount of energy, right. So we still got all those ads, and I'm going to use the use the sword to take out the ads that were here. Now this orb, something I never said in any of my videos, because actually a friend of mine, big shout out to Leroy Mint, told me I don't I don't really have to bother about that orb, because they'll all come back at the end. So my plan was take out the take out a sword knight, and then from up in the tower take the second sword knight. As you can see, the orb has disappeared. But no, I've already got a sword waiting for me. And that that's that's the big difference. That is the big difference between the wallet run and the tight the, the Titan run. As I'm I'm looking I'm looking to try and find I actually went to the wrong place. I was looking to get the wizard next. And I thought I had the wizard, but it turned out it I don't think it was. No, it wasn't. So just put a grenade in there and couple it with some shots. Don't get too close because the knight gets a little bit... He, do, he doesn't like it and he'll come after you. Now, for anybody that's never seen any of the videos that I've done, what we do here is I always... Oh, 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 more, more, more so for the wizard. Uh, I'm trying to clear all these ads here first. So more so for the wizard. I always try and attack from the back, sit back, because it's, it, it's closed off. So, I don't have to. I don't have to worry about ads coming from that that direction. They will come. They will come from round there, but they can't just come straight out. With you know, I get some. I get some. Uh, I get some warning because they've got to come round from quite. You know, they've got to come around the corner as opposed to coming out that opening. So again, we'll look for the knight. Take him. Now we've picked the orb up. I want. I want. I want to reload Honed Edge before I pick the orb up. And now what we'll do is we'll go to one of the areas where the boss isn't. And we'll slam, then pick the sword up and go and kill the last boss. Now, every time you slam, you will get Thrall. There's three spawn points, these kind of plant pots. So I always try and make sure they're gone first. Now... If you've been watching the video from the start, shout out, shout out to you guys. I've changed my weapon setup. I've got the Recluse, which it's just because it's a high rate of fire energy weapon. It's not because it's like super strong. Even when they nerf this thing, I w that, that's still what I'd be using because of its rate of fire. It's not because it's got, you know, I know you... Not many people are going to believe that, but it's not because it's so strong. It's just because it's it's an energy SMG, high rate of fire, brilliant for smaller ads, and that's all we're going to be using it for is the smaller ads. So, again, just be careful. Make sure that you you know your your right side of your aim can actually throw that round. The right side of your you know your viewpoint can throw that shot around. Now we're going to slam this orb. We've got what's going to happen is because we let an orb disappear. Well, we didn't let it; it did disappear. But it was it was good, so I could show you guys how this works. An orb. What? We're, we're, obviously, we're going to get more more thrall. I'm looking for the thrall. 
Now, Thrall and this are quite annoying because they, they appear and then it's like they run away from you. So we're going to try and get them to come over here. Every time, every time you slam, you will get Thrall. Every time. So now we're going to have to go around here. But as you can see on the on 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 the video, as you can see on the screen, there is an orb now at every single tower. That's what happens. So as you see, they disappear and then reappear immediately because they've got a, a timer as well that they'll they'll sit there for. So now we're at DPS. We've I think there's still a thrall up, but it's fine because he's not up anymore. Slam, and then where I go straight away is I go the opposite direction, so that I'm between between the boss and and the crystal because his his damage can do a lot. And as you can see, with Honed Edge, while whilst he's in that effect, we do we do quite a considerable bit of damage. So now we've got Explodus coming in. So because we've got the bubble, if we can get them to come into the bubble and jump out of it, it's a contained explosion. Right, you just have to be careful. See what I mean? It's con I, I was red, but because I got them to explode in the bubble, I wasn't affected. So we'll get Honed Edge up again, and we'll put one more headshot on them, and then we'll get out and rinse and repeat. So the difference between first wave and second wave. So I think the night, yeah, the nights were actually behind me. And I forgot to put Honed Edge on. The difference between first wave, second wave, third wave, because this is a three three phase, which I think was slightly faster than my last one. I think I f had to four phase him because I might have missed a damage phase. I can't remember how, how that worked, but this is a three phase. Uh, so again, now we'll just go up and we'll take out the first first boss, throw some throw some uh, shots in there just to clear ads. Now when you get the wizard. It's great for clearing the ads because if you just throw that energy shot in there, it will damage the ads. There we go. Now, again, it was something I wasn't doing, but if that happens to you, you get caught in the wizard's kind of poison. Just block. The block's really good for a lot of stuff. And when you're firing in, as I'm firing in from quite, the, the stairs in front of me are quite steep. Back away a bit. Keep backing away every time you fire so you don't end up too close to the stairs and you're, you're firing at the stairs. So just wait for your health to come back. And there we go. Now we'll get, what we're going to do is take out this last ad. These night, the, the hive are really annoying in this. They have been for quite some time because they run away too much. They hide too much. So, as you can see, just pick up the special, pick up the orb. Now, the thing we done in the first bit with the, the orb disappearing, that you can do that every time if that's what you if that's what you want to do. All right? Now, we're just going to try and find... We know where the Shrieker is. We, we want to find these... Uh, these Thrall. We don't really want to let Thrall, like, gang up down here. But again, as you can see there, so we're going to block. We're going to where the Shrieker is. We're just going to block because that will get, get us our health back. And now we can just from here, even though there's ads hitting me, because I'm blocking, I'm safe. I think I think what really does a lot of damage to you here from the ads is, as you can see there, the boss is hitting me. And his shots are coming from a completely different side. So the block... Ne Block's not going to affect, you know, it's not going to protect you from everything, but it'll protect you from most things. So, there we go. Make sure you've got your honed edge on. Pick the orb up so it doesn't disappear. Now we're looking for the next sword knight. There he is. And he'll run away. So this one, I think this one was another one of those that was quite annoying because the sword knight, every time I looked at him, he went, nope. <laughs> so eventually I just ended up pushing it. But 90% of the time, what I'm doing is I'm taking out the sword knights from inside the towers. So that we'll, this get where our recluse out here. As you can see, it's, it's just because it's a high rate of fire. That's all it is. And just try and stun him. 
and we don't have honed edge so jump over them turn aim up high and bang there's still another throw and for some reason now you'll notice this and I could probably do something about it uh, but for some reason it seems like I always end up, nearly always end up, regardless of what I do, with the wizard as the last boss standing. I don't know why that is. It's just, it's, it, it, I can do something about it by, you know, by checking more what boss I'm going after. But if I just leave it to chance, it will always be the wizard. You check the videos of the other runs that I've done and it's nearly always the wizard I end up with last. So another thing that will happen, now I'm, 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 as I'm doing that attack, and you'll have seen it at other points, I'm doing that right shoulder attack. I'm aiming at him, and for some reason, every now and again, it'll just track nothing. It's very. Uh, if I was, if I, if somebody asked me about this uh, dungeon, my thoughts on this dungeon, my thoughts would be, it's the glitchiest dungeon we've ever had. There's so many things that can glitch out. So another little small piece of information, and it's it's one of those worthless pieces of information, but somebody might enjoy it. You're looking to do over your DPS phases about two million damage. It's not it's not uh, it's not a kick in the backside off two million. So that's what you're looking for. We want to move him. Because it just worked out, and it normally doesn't, that he's actually standing at the last pod that I need. So we just want to keep giving him a show. The other thing is, obviously, and I haven't said it because I think it goes without saying, you want to keep your super for DPS. So pop it here. We're going to put a grenade. And then get honed edge shot straight away. And we reload. Now the honed edge, to get the honed edge reloaded, so there's three, right right off the bat of each other. To get the honed edge reloaded, uh, now you'll see the bubble's gone. The bubble is gone because the boss, right, well the bubble hasn't gone, but it, it leads me into the fact that, and it's something I didn't realise, the boss's attack can will damage your bubble, which is why you put it on the other side of the crystal. So we'll just... Put the last of our heavy. You can see we've done a fair bit of damage that time. Make sure you're out of that circle. When he puts his sword down, uh, one of one of my clan actually had a bit of a laugh about it. That uh, he, when I said when he goes down on one knee, he's not going to propose to you. Well, when he goes down on one knee, that's your cue to do your. You know, you probably got about five, five sec, eight seconds, five to eight seconds, something like that. So make sure you've got a ch see. I, it was really strange because I've just said that the wizard is the last one I normally fight. And this time, it seems not to be the case, but normally is. When when the wizard goes down, on, when the Zomac goes down on one knee, basically what that's telling you is, do one more heavy shot, or one more whatever, and get out of there. You know? Now, as I was trying to say before the thing happened with the exploders, to get your honed edge reloaded after every shot. As soon as you fire, just hold reload. Just hold it. Just fire hold. Fire hold. And you'll just reload. If you hold the reload button, you will just reload a honed edge shot straight away. Now, I'm not so great at doing that because I'm looking to see if I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm ball watching if you like. You know, I'm, I'm watching to make sure I hit the crit. Now, another thing you'd have seen the last time... There we go. We'll just take my sword knight from up here. Another thing you'd have seen the last time is... I went... I, I put three honed edge shots. Which is 100... With, with the grenade and obviously weapons of light. That's 122,000 per hit. So, I mean, you're looking at almost 370. 370,000 damage. To, to three phase the boss, you're looking to do 6.8, I think. 6.6 .6 million damage per six six yeah six hundred and sixty odd thousand per DPS. So if you hit three honed edge, you're already doing half the DPS that you need to do for that that section. 
You know, if you want to two-phase the boss, you need to do a million per per hit. And and if you want to do a one phase, which why? Why would you? But if you want to do a one phase, you need to do two million damage in in one phase. Right? And I don't think that's that's uh that's something that because as far as I'm aware, it's 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 a PC thing, and it's a one-two punch thing. I'm trying to find the last sword knight here, or the next sword knight, should I say? It's a one-two punch thing. Uh, you have to couple it with uh, from from what I've seen and what I've heard. I think Chevy was the first one to do it, and then unfortunately. Uh, it's been done a few times. The usual suspects are like, oh, I can do that as well. Uh, I don't really like it when someone finds a strategy and other people are like, oh, I have to keep up my good name. I have to do that. A friend of mine has done a 100, 100k nightfall and he's perfected a nightfall. It's very, very good. I haven't bothered doing it myself, although I, I, I have, but not as a solo. I took a couple of people through and I tested it. I uh, took a couple of people through the 100k, and basically on the Titan, if you use Top Tree Solar, Top Tree Sunbreaker, uh, with Perkin Greaves, on the 950 Nightfall, you can one-hit a champion, just with, obviously, Perkin Greaves, you do more damage uh, with your shoulder charge if you're airborne, so Perkin Greaves, Top Tree Sunbreaker, big shout out to Shablo91 for coming up with that because that's that's fan, that's that's a really good strategy. But it works. You don't have to you don't have to take any weapons in. <clears throat> you don't have to take any weapons that actually you know overload or barrier. You just you know when I say you don't have to take any weapons in, what I mean is there's no weapons needed to one hit a boss. You know you 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 don't have to take their shield down first or you don't have to stun an overload. You just hit them with an airborne shoulder charge. I can put my my uh, strength up to 10, so I get my melee back in 31 seconds. Very good for doing nightfalls. And as I say, I went in with a team, and I wanted to test it out. And I did test it out. And uh, yeah, it one hits champions. Very, very good. So as you can see here, the, the thing I'd done the last time that I didn't do, the thing I'd done this time that I didn't do the last time, was I made sure my grenade launcher was reloaded. And because and because we, we kept going through the bubble, I kept weapons, because obviously when you go through the bubble, you get weapons alike for an additional 15 seconds. You see how much damage I was doing there with the grenade launcher. And last honed edge shot. My grenade launcher is probably a god roll, considered to be a god roll i don't really say god roll that often but it's it's the best rolls you can get i think i've got full court uh, spike grenades with a boss spec and that is it guys thank you very much for watching i hope this helps you get your flawless hope this helps you get your solo if you have any questions leave them in the comment section thank you very much for watching ha happy thanksgiving to all my american friends and i will see you guys in the next video